Fellow golfers, remember the decades-old debate about should the golf swing be powered by the arms or the body? It's a moot point because each body segment must have its own very specific role in the golf swing, allowing every body part to be used efficiently based on its structural capabilities and neuromuscular connectivity. Let me explain what I mean. Try this drill. Go to the top of your backswing, moving the arms and body as you usually do, but with no club in your hands. Then from the top, simply straighten your elbows and wrists without moving the shoulders or any other body part. Where do your arms fall? How can you bring the club to the ball from that position? By making some combination of legs and torso motion. Specifically, every leg or torso movement made in the backswing must be reversed in your downswing. For instance, the raised trail side of the torso must be dropped down, but backwards, not forwards, as forwards would be over the top. The torso rotation away from target must be reversed so it moves towards target. The lead shoulder, hip and knee that were dropped closer to the ground during the backswing must be lifted up. There is a problem with using so much torso motion during the downswing. The human body was really designed for our hunter-gatherer ancestors, that is, to move the legs and torso mainly in the forwards and backwards sagittal plane, that too with the arms working independently, not together. It was not designed for sophisticated combinations of rotary and side bending movements, especially those made in an extremely limited amount of time. Look at this homunculus or representative map of the resources of just one part of the central nervous system and see how little of the cerebral cortex is allocated to movement of the trunk, hip and knee. The entire brain and spinal cord prioritize the movements most used by humans, such as tongue and facial movements and those of the hands and arms and afford minimal neuronal connections for trunk movement. So it really is not realistic to expect golfers to consistently make some combination of movements of the body for about six feet of arm and club travel, especially if that movement must take place during the one-third second time of the downswing and requires specific sequencing as well. It is the reason golfers, including the elite professional golfers of the world, are so erratic in their performance. Now, don't take my word for it. World-famous biomechanist Dr. Stuart McGill is famous for developing power, speed and movement competency in many athletes from many sports. Based on 10 years of research on long drivers in his lab, he and Lee Brandon, world long drive champion, made the must-watch video New Science of Golf. They found that the golf swing needs a small pulse of activity from the trail side, butt and abdominal muscles just prior to or at impact not a big force for a large percentage of the downswing. This is in keeping with his extensive research on proximal stiffness for distal speed. This concept applies to other sports too, such as the martial arts, where the torso is kept stiff to throw a forceful punch. It is not strength or muscle force that hits the ball far, but rather a muscle pulse. Greater ball distance, according to Dr. McGill, results from less than maximal effort. What is needed is core stiffness with correct sequencing. So, while the golf swing has been passed down to us from the times of the shepherds of Scotland, unchanged in its basic premises, we need not continue this rather unscientific motion in the 21st century when we have options. What options? Check this out. When the torso rotation has been completed in advance and only the arms move in the backswing, upon straightening the elbows and wrists, the arms drop down very close to the ball so that very little movement has to be made by the body to line the club up for impact. 
Of course, I'm not saying that you should drop the arms, elbows and wrists first. I'm just showing their quantity of contribution to the entire movement. Now, instead of transferring pressure from the trail side to the lead side, this swing positions pressure where it is required in the downswing for a truly locked in body against which the arms and club can whip forcefully through as Dr. McGill has suggested. If the feet stabilize against the ground and the torso stabilizes against the planted legs, there is a very forceful arms punch to be had, created by overall less movement of the core, which is perhaps an easier way to maintain the stiffening at impact that Dr. McGill describes. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the correct use of the ground, not by pushing here and pushing there, through the feet or dropping this leg and lifting that leg to use the ground better. That is why such a swing as I have developed can give better consistency of ball distance and direction and put less loads on most joints too because the body doesn't have a huge contribution which it is unable to make on a consistent basis because of its limited resources d derived from the brain. Lots of people mistakenly believe that less movement equals less ball speed, but that is not the case. Less movement is what the golf swing of the future must look like so that people can perform better and have less injury risk. Get in touch if you'd like to learn a more effective, efficient and safe golf swing.